right, guys, it is Wednesday, January 31st. It's a very important day for us here at Resto Mods because it is the end of a bonus period. That's right, four times entries. Tonight at midnight, never again will we offer four times entries. I'll show you the car in a little bit. It's RM25. It's tucked back here. You can kind of just see the corner of it. Where is it? There it is, right there. Um, so if you're planning on entering to win that car and $20,000, you wanna do that before midnight tonight. So claim those entries at restomods.com before midnight tonight. I'm here to give you a little garage update. We're gonna run through. We've got a lot going on in the garage today. So uh, I'm gonna walk around and show you some of the stuff we got going on. You can see some of it behind me, including a little sneak peek at RM22. And you may know, this being January 31st, that uh, Barrett Jackson Scottsdale has already happened. So um, I know we talked about taking that car to Bear Jackson. They were very excited to have it. We were excited to sell it there. But uh, the response from our community has just been overwhelming. And so I'm gonna drop a little secret on you right now. And that is that RM22 is coming back, just like you asked for. So RM22 is coming back and is also gonna be RM26. Uh, and we've got all kinds of extra surprises with that. So we are gonna put that up as another sweepstakes, or put it up as a sweepstakes car again. We've never run a car twice. This is gonna be the very first one that we've run twice. Um, so it's gonna be interesting. We're gonna do this together. We're gonna work together on this one. And there's gonna be a lot more cash with it as well as a veterans charity angle. So we are going to uh, take care of the people that take care of us every day. Um, and we're gonna do that in tandem with the winner. So a lot more details on RM26 coming. Again, today is the last day to claim 400% bonus entries on RM25. Let me see if I can master this new camera we got. Uh, boom, boom, boom. There we go. So this, obviously, is RM25. And uh, we are on the last day of four times entries to win this beautiful 1968 Charger and $20,000 in cash. So make sure you head over to restomods.com before midnight tonight and claim those entries. So you've still got time if you're watching this video on Wednesday, January 31st. If you're watching it later, sorry. Um, you still can get entered to win. Uh, the sweepstakes rolls until April, I wanna say. Um, and then we will be uh, calling a winner. So April in 2024, we will be calling a winner. We've got some other stuff going on in here. This is also a 1968 Charger, believe it or not, uh, although slightly incomplete. We did have uh, the guys from Mopar's 5150 came through uh, yesterday and dropped this off uh, for us. And uh, we've got some big, big plans for it. Um, as you can see, um, there's currently nothing in here. But we got this one from Mopar's 5150 for a very specific reason. And that is because they do a stiffening job uh, on the chassis on that car. It's a unibody, but they do a ton of little stiffening pieces in it so that it can handle high, high horsepower. So what high horsepower engine do you think we would be putting in a 1968 Charger? I've got the answer right here. That right there if you've been watching the channel for a while, is our Hellcat uh, crate. I don't know if you can, can you call it a crate if you bought it out of a storage locker? We've never, we've never had it in a crate. I mean, if you want, we can build a crate around it and then uncrate it. And then call it a crate? It was in a, a Dodge Challenger crate. That's what it <laughs> <laughs> It had a crate around it, wrapped around it, called a Dodge Challenger. Yeah. Um, it's actually a funny story. I think we've actually told this story on video before of how we got this Probably. thing, but it was a pretty funny sale uh, where we came upon this particular engine. We've never actually started it. No, I have had the, like the coil packs and the spark plugs out and looked down in there with a camera um, and the cylinders all look good. There's nothing broken or anything. It came out of a car because it was wrecked. So knowing that a car has to be drivable to wreck it. So uh, it was running a driving vehicle. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, you can tell they, they pulled this out of here in a hurry though. Like a lot of stuff is just cut. Um, it's got a seatbelt wrapped around yeah, it. This is the old junkyard special. You'd be surprised at how strong a seatbelt is. But um, yeah, I think what happened, what happens a lot of times is that you just have a fixed amount of time to get whatever you need off a car once it goes to like a salvage lot. You know, I don't know what the process is for them taking it out. By the time we saw it, it was like this. So. Yeah, it was like this in some guy's garage um, and we bought it. But the plan is to take this and put it in that 68 body that we just got from Mopar's 5150 yesterday. Hi, Jeremy. Uh, and then make ourselves a Hellcat 68 Charger. Yeah, we're getting a little 
a little too used to supercharged V8s around here. I mean, you say that almost like it's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Uh, it's not a bad thing. A um, in here right now. Even. So also what I've noticed is we've gone a little bit Mopar crazy. <laughs> um, we obviously have a lot of Chevys and stuff, but there is a whole lot of Mopar in here, including this thing that just showed up today. Um, we were just up in uh, Valley Center, which is just up the road from us here in San Diego, picking up this uh, red 70 charger. Uh, give us the spiel on this. You wanna give us a walk around and sure. see what's going yeah. on? So we saw this car listed online and it was a guy that we worked with before. He gets a ton of muscle cars um, and it just looked really cool. It was bright red, it was a 70. It looked to be in good shape. Underneath, this car is really solid. The floors, the trunk, um, we drove it. it drove really nice actually. We went on a little test drive and it steers tight. The suspension's good. Uh, he told us he had driven it down from LA so we knew it was kind of a proven car. It's got 2,000 miles uh, on the new set of gauges so this car's been kind of shaken down. It's got a lot of good stuff that we already wanted that it's hard to find in the Charger world. A lot of these cars are so original but we want them modified. Um, so it started out as a 318 car. It already has a big block and a 727 which is it's a 440, that's the combo we like. Uh, it has Dakota digital gauges. Um, it has LED lighting already. It has an um, uh, American Auto Wire wiring harness. So all the wiring's been updated, which is a big thing in these cars. So it has like a lot of key components. There's a few little blemishes in the paint, uh, but nothing like structural, no rust, anything like that. There's just gonna be some dents you wanna clean up and get the paint really shining, but we saw it out in the sun, and I think that's what, that's what sold it for us. This this color just pops out in the sun. Yeah, and the reaction from people on the road was just insane. I mean, so many thumbs up. Like you always get a lot of thumbs up in any kind of you know old school classic that looks halfway decent, and then this thing being bright red was just yeah. unreal. I mean, it's tough because like we we love these cars, so we see stuff and we get excited about it. But it's like, what's the gauge for like the general you know the general consensus of how much someone loves a car? And it's like the thumbs up meter, right? So yeah. You drive it and like, how many thumbs up do you get? And this one, this one pegged the scales just in like a 40 minute drive back. So. And I love that it's got this bench seat in the it's front. Kinda unique. It's kind of unique. At first, you know, your first gut reaction is like, oh, it's not sporty enough. It doesn't have the bench seat, you know? But then once I got in it and drove it, and then I kind of like it, you know? It's got a column shifter, which is kind of rare for these cars. Yeah, but you were already talking about a six speed. <laughs> well, we have that and I just went on a ride long video with that and the big block six speed combo with the RPM on the freeway just did it for me. I noticed an immediate difference. That car, I was cruising 70 miles an hour at like 2200 RPM. This car has kind of an aggressive rear gear, probably a 373 with the 727. And I was at like 3000 RPM at like 65. So I'm like, well, how do we address that? It might be a softer rear gear. We might go to like a 323 or something in the back and that'll help a lot. Um, but we like our Silver Sport transmissions. They have five speeds that we wouldn't have to make as any tunnel modifications. Yeah, maybe in the audience, if you guys have any idea, should we leave the three-speed automatic on the column or should we pop in a uh, Silver Sport five-speed manual? Well, we go back and forth between the stick and the automatic cars because not everyone can drive a stick shift, although the, it's exciting and it's really cool in a muscle car. Um, the automatic's really cool too. Like, I was really comfortable cruising this car back uh, where you start thinking in your head like, oh, like this one, I could daily this car, you know? And it kind of goes with the bench seat too. Like if you were cruising with your lady, you know, you want to have her snuggled up on the bench seat, yeah. not, uh, you know, having to bang through the gears. That's the thing, yeah. When you have a bench seat and a stick shift, I mean, I don't know if anyone grew up having like a truck, but my dad had a truck with a bench seat and a stick shift. And when all me and my sister would get in there, you know, and my mom, we were all four wide across there. And <laughs> when he's like shifting gears, you know, it's like, you got to figure out what to do. So that's the bench seat and the stick shift kind of, it's a rare combo. You know? Yeah, taking a, a, a shifter to the kneecap every here and then. <laughs> so yeah, this is a, a 70 Charger and the color is just, it, it grabs you. It's uh, very cool. So let us know what you think about that, what we should do with the drivetrain setup. I also let it out of the bag that RM22 is going to be RM26. Okay, it's official. It's official. We already kind of like, the people have spoken on that one. We couldn't ignore it, but yeah, now it's official. Yeah, I think it's also official that it's still here and Barrett Jackson was this past weekend, so. Right, yeah, that settles the score on that. 
that settles the score on that. So uh, we've gone through the 68 uh, supercharged Camaro that's over here. Um, I'm hoping Joe cut to some footage of uh, Mopar's 5150 being here yesterday and dropping off this uh, 68 body. I love how they called it a roller and it's got these tiny, <laughs> these tiny wheels on it. Yeah, no, it did roll in here. I guess you can't lie about that. Yeah, we're gonna have to uh, call QA1 sooner than later and get, get a full setup for this thing. Yeah, we're gonna get the ball rolling on that as quick as possible. Also, we still have our uh, 67 Chevelle over here. Um, this thing's gonna be off to body and paint, hopefully sometime soon. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much ready. We got the front sheet metal back on so that it can go all as one piece. But yeah, that's next step. We got done with all the fab work, all the trimming and clearancing for the chassis. You know, there was some stuff we had to do for the inner fenders. Um, and then everything's in primer, it's all... Uh, I saw it got dynamated. Yeah, I got dynamated. So what we did is we cleaned all the original floors. They were in great shape. Uh, so we cleaned all that and then we did uh, Raptor liner, which is like a, a nice solid rubberized undercoating. So we did the whole floor and the trunk in that and then dynamated everything. Um, and that's after welding in the new tunnel and everything. And that way when it goes to paint, all this part is all done and it gets back and we're just full bore on final assembly. The chassis is already powder coated. The whole underside of the car is already uh, also Raptor lined. So it's basically just paint. We're not gonna have to ever take this thing back off the chassis again. Uh, once it comes back painted, we're just gonna start putting it together. That's it from there. Yeah, after that, it's just easy, right? Maybe a week or two? Yeah, maybe like two, three days if we don't sleep. <laughs> Dude, you could not sleep for two weeks. I don't yeah, think it would get all done. That, like, overhauling is, is crazy. You know, you see them do that on overhauling, but that's like a team of 20 people not sleeping, and uh, it doesn't make sense. It makes sense if you're doing it for that case, you know, for TV. But Yeah. Uh, we, we love YouTube, but we're, we're not just doing this for yeah, YouTube. We, we have a little more than a week to put the car together, and I think you'll appreciate how it comes out with spend a little more time on it. Yeah, I can't wait for this one, honestly. I love the 67, it's a great year. It's got my favorite feature, the flying buttresses. The flying buttresses, for me, this is the first car that we're doing on like this level of a chassis, this roaster shop chassis. It's a fast track, so it's their top level chassis. This is what you see as the foundation for all of the highest level builds in the industry. Uh, so I'm excited about that because it's gonna, it's gonna make this car perform like when we say better than new we usually mean better than when this car was new right at this level of a chassis this probably will perform better than a new car itself you know as far as handling and all that. we'll have to put it to the test i see some candidates over here that it could uh yeah maybe yeah. get uh, get put to the test with there's another we one over benchmarks, yeah we've got some uh we've got even some your, candidates even your car this oh yeah this little thing kind of a, a legend in the sedan world i don't know though we've been uh experiencing the Blackwing lately, and that's like... Yeah, the Blackwing Cadillac is a heck of a car. Sedan in the sedan world, that's tough to beat. I mean, and that's G. I feel like it's gotta be GM on GM. Yeah. So yeah, we'll put that thing to the test. Um, let's see what else is going on over here. Um, blue. Pretty show off Jeremy's handiwork. Yeah, let's see what we got over here. Good. You don't wanna come down and show us? Oh, he's coming down, all right. It's got a compressor. Yeah, a lot it's of got stuff. Uh, injectors. I think since the last time it was on camera, Jeremy's made like a ton of headway of bolting, like pretty much all the physical parts. Yeah, are there. It's a lot of wiring and plumbing now. Phytex all in wiring is in. Just needs to be cleaned up in the back. We put in the radiator. I think two earlier this week. Uh, we have some plumbing to do on that. But these awesome billet. Uh, yeah, I, I know those it's are a small cool. Thing, but the American flag on it. That's a classy touch. Yeah, the little uh, things matter. ICT, right there. Uh, we'll do the Willwoods and then mount the computer inside right here. Is this, my, I was gonna say, is that your to-do to list? list. Uh, we have a Phytech surge tank that we'll be going in. Uh, hopefully today we have to kind of- We've got more to-do list over here. Fabricate, fabricate a bracket for it. Okay. To go. All right, well, I was promised this was gonna make noise in January and it's the 31st. We have, I'm at, we have hours. We have hours. You've got hours to make, go. No, what does make noise really mean? Can we, yeah, yeah. what does that really mean? Uh, now they're getting into technicalities, folks. That's when you know it's nowhere near being done when they start getting into technicalities. We do need a rear end on this too. Yeah. We have oh, I thought, rear. did we send it out and we're waiting on it to come back? Yeah, yeah. so we, we have the, we had the stock like peg leg 12 bowl one tire fryer, um, but with like 650 plus horsepower, that wasn't gonna cut it. So we have um, Pro Gear here in San Diego going through the whole 12 bolt, 
and we're actually going to swap to like nine inch rear outer uh, housings to get rid of the c-clip type setup um, it'll be better for the power it'll be better for like bearing selection it's all going to be like four nine inch outer but still with a strong 12 volt posi unit in the rear finally posi finally posi i yeah. think the big question is like how long are we going to have a 4l60 behind this before it before it blows up before it blows up i think that's going to be the the question see i was even that's taking bats yeah how long do you guys think in the comments how long is the 4l60e that's sitting behind this monster uh gonna last i'm just you know how long is it gonna be until it you know makes noise on its own uh well it would appear we've missed our first deadline so we're gonna revise <laughs> we're gonna revise that it's always the thing that gets mid, bumped the most mid february that is true yeah so obviously priority here is always sweepstakes cars you know um and getting those dialed in um, Jeremy has a full-time job and it's not being back here working on these cars. So he's been like putting in after hours time and blue is just kind of, that's the beauty of a shop truck is that you can kind of like have fun after hours. You can try different stuff, you can learn stuff. We got like a little excited on the power level on this, but. As we should. Then you want to do everything nice. So like he said, like the little stuff when you're putting the radiator back together, we didn't want to put back the stock ones. There's a ton of little things like that, that we were like, okay, now let's put a Willwood master cylinder on it. Um, stuff kind of escalates and that's what takes a little longer, but I think Junior mentioned these are next. Yeah, oh, yeah. we might have some billet hinges next. Some new hood hinges. I mean, you guys did a lot of stuff too, like when the engine was out, it was a good time to like kind of scuff and spray the wheel wells and the core support, just to clean that up a little bit. So a ton of stuff like that, that just takes time. And when you're chipping away at it, uh, with, uh, you know, like giveaway car work in the middle of it. Yeah, you do get distracted uh, so those are all here and excuses. there. I think I've listed like as many as I can. Uh, was... Kids, food, <laughs> sleep. <laughs> Yeah. All overrated, all overrated. Over here, by the way, speaking of uh, delays, uh, over here is the 440 and the trans for the Ram Charger, um, which doesn't look like much right now, but you guys can actually win this car, truck, I should say. It's actually over there. You can see it in the corner over there. Uh, that's the body and frame. Uh, and here is the uh, rebuilt 440 and the transmission that's all ready to go back into that thing as soon as Regan gets some free time. Let's go bug Regan for an update. Regan. Regs, when are you gonna get some time to work on the Ram Charger? Uh, I'm trying to finish this Jeep up and tie up some other things I gotta do. And then, so probably next week I'll be able to get on it and hopefully get the trans at least in, or trans and engine at least in the truck. But that's exciting. I also just wanted to take a moment and get your freshly shaven face on camera. It's really something. <laughs> it is. It is, yeah, you look much younger. Um, maybe we'll cut to some, some footage of you from the Chevelle build where you actually were much younger. Oh, when I had like the bowl cut. And yeah, yeah, you've grown a lot of hair since then. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see if I can figure out how to flip this thing back. All right, guys, so that is the update in the Resto Mods garage uh, for Wednesday, January 31st, 2024. Uh, we are in the last hours of four times entries to win that 1968 Charger and $20,000. This is your best chance. I want to say the vast majority of our winners get in during this four times bonus period. It's the most entries we offer, the biggest multiplier, uh, and we never offer it again. So this sweepstakes will end in April of 2024. And... Uh, um, we will never offer four times entries again uh, during that sweepstakes. So if you're looking to get entered to win that charger and $20,000, now is the best time to do it. So head over to restomods.com, claim those entries. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get a chance to win that 1975 Ram charger uh, when it's all built. Hopefully by then we are up to 100,000 subs. When we get to 100,000 subs, we are going to pick a subscriber at random uh, and give away that truck. So it could be you. Remember to subscribe. Head over to restomods.com. Claim those entries to win that 68 Charger and $20,000. Good luck.